Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Frey and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. I've done a lot of favorites videos on my channel. That's because I love to watch favorites videos on YouTube. But every time I do one, I share whichever products or little things that I found on Amazon that I'm enjoying in that particular season of my life. Obviously, lately, I'm doing everything on a computer because I am teaching my students virtually. So for this favorites video, I thought I would share with you all my digital favorites. So my favorite websites, different apps, and things that I've been using with my students that have been successful. Let's jump right into it, not waste any more time. My first digital favorite is the Chrome browser. Now I've been using the Chrome browser for a long time, but I haven't been using it to its full capacity, you could say. I, for the longest time, did not realize you could actually log in to the browser with your Google account. And that has been a game changer. I have a lot of Google accounts, okay? I have a personal Google account. I have my business Google account. I have my work Google account. And then I also have a joint Google account with Bridget for teaching on the double. Now, that's all fun and games until it comes time to go into like Google Drive or like a YouTube account or something like that. And you constantly have to check which account you're in and you have to switch it over and that's a lot of work. So instead, I have actually been logging into the Chrome browser with each of my different accounts and then I'm able to quickly switch between accounts depending on what I'm doing. So during the day when I'm working on school stuff, I am logged into the Chrome browser using my work account. Then at the end of the day, when I'm ready to work on business stuff, I will just switch users on the Chrome browser and I will log into my business Google account. Now here's why I love that so much. Not only does it save time, but I also can then save my bookmarks. So I have my work bookmarks on my work Google account for Chrome. And then I have my business bookmarks that are on my business Google account, which I log into Chrome. So when I switch between accounts, I feel like I'm not explaining this well enough, but hopefully you get the point. When I switch accounts, it will also switch out my bookmarks. Now the bookmarks are another feature of Google Chrome that I love. I think pretty much every internet browser either has bookmarks or favorites. They all call it different things, but it's you know the same thing. It's just saving websites that you use most frequently. But I love the fact that you can actually sync your Google account so that those bookmarks will show up on any computer. So when I go to school and I use the Chrome browser on my work computer, because I'm signed into the Chrome browser with my work Google account, I have the same exact bookmarks. And if I add a bookmark while I'm there, if I come home and go onto my personal computer, I will see that bookmark because it automatically syncs to that account. Now, when it comes to adding bookmarks, I have really been loving having just the icon or the favicon of the website. It's that little image that's associated with the website. When you add in a bookmark, if you delete the text, it will just have that little icon or image. The reason I like that is because I can fit so many more bookmarks on my bookmark bar if I don't have any text. Then I actually started color coding them. For the longest time, I had them just in order of like importance of use. And I would see people color coding it and I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Once I tried it, I actually, I love it. <laughs> So if you are not already using the Chrome browser, highly recommend, it's free to download. I will link it down in the description box. I also will link a video that specifically goes through how to actually sign in to your account on the Chrome browser because I did not explain it very well at all. My second digital favorite is Google Jamboard. Now, let me start by saying, I do have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Google Jamboard. There's a lot I wish it could do that it can't do yet, but I'm hoping that that's coming. Google, if you're listening, please take my advice and I would love you forever. Now, Google Jamboard is basically a virtual whiteboard. So you have the ability to draw like with a pen tool, you can highlight on there, you can add in text boxes, you can add in images. It's very versatile. However, unlike on Google Slides, you do not have the ability to lock an image. 
which means you will have moments where you accidentally move the image around. It can be a little bit annoying, but for a free tool, you know, I'll take it. Here's how I've been using Jamboard. Sometimes I will just open up a blank Google Jamboard and I will present my screen on Google Meet and I will use it to work through a problem. So I will draw on the screen. I especially love to do this from my iPad because I can use my Apple Pencil and my handwriting looks a million times better than if I'm trying to use a mouse. So that's a great way in the moment if you need to just like put something visual for the kids as you're explaining something, you can do that or you can pre-make Google Jamboards by maybe putting some titles and maybe putting some images, and then you can share out the link to students. So it has the share button, just like Google Docs, just like Google Slides, and you can change the permissions. So if you want your students just to view the Jamboard and be able to see it on their own screen as you're working on it, you can just have it as viewer. Share out the link, I personally just drop it in the Google Meet chat, and that's it or you can actually give your students edit permission. Now you do have to be careful with this because if you give your students all edit access, any text you've put on Jamboard, any images you've put on, they're going to be able to move around. There also is a laser pointer tool that they will start using on the screen. It's highly annoying. But if you train your students well enough, yes, I said train and I meant it. If you train them to not use the laser pointer and to only maneuver their own elements. So if they're adding like a sticky note or they're adding a text box, they can only move those around. It's not so bad. Plus you can change edit permissions at any time. So for example, maybe I want to know how my students weekend went. I usually do something called peach and pit with them. So I have a Google Jamboard and I have half the screen say peach and half the screen say pit. Peach is something good from their weekend and Pit is something not so good. And I want them to add a sticky note to each side to tell me about how their weekend went. I will give my students edit access, share the link through Google Meet. I will give them like two or three minutes to add their thoughts. I do tell them you can only move your own sticky note. You can make your sticky note smaller but not bigger, otherwise we can't fit them all and don't use the laser pointer. That's literally always my role. Don't use the laser pointer. Where's my laser pointer? Never mind. Once their time is up, I can go back to the share settings and just change it from edit access to view access and immediately they will not be able to edit it anymore. So I will then regain full control and that way I can then move around the sticky notes. So if they were kind of overlapping each other, I can fix it. Then that way they can't continue moving their sticky notes around on the screen. Honestly, there are so many ways you can use Google Jamboard. You can even post it as an assignment on Google Classroom and choose to make a copy for every student so that every student edits just their own Jamboard. What I really like is the different tools, so the pen, the highlighter, the images, the text. I feel like it's an all-in-one kind of tool versus Google Slides where students are more limited. And I love the fact that I can use it just as the teacher and I can share out the link for my students to view it or I can give them edit access and turn it off at any time I want. Recently, I had to record instructional videos for emergency sub day plans. And what I ended up doing is putting some like note sheets and practice problems on a Google Jamboard, I opened it up on my iPad and I did a screen recording. So as I talked through the problems and I wrote on the Google Jamboard, I was recording my screen and I had the microphone enabled so it recorded my voice. So it was basically like those Khan Academy videos that you see where they're like drawing on the screen and narrating it. That's what I had as my instructional videos for my emergency sub plans. It was super easy. And then all I had to do is post that video, post whatever assignment they're gonna do and I'm good to go. My third digital favorite is Nearpod. You all saw about two videos ago, I made a tutorial on how I am using Nearpod with my students. I am literally using Nearpod to teach every single lesson because I feel like my lessons flow so much better when I use Nearpod and it's more engaging for my students. So if you've never heard of Nearpod, it basically is an interactive slideshow. Students will join in either using a code or a link. I usually just drop the link into the Google Meet chat. And then you as a teacher are in control of the pacing of the lesson. So if you change slides, it will change on student devices. 
And you can add in interactive elements like matching pairs, videos, different games, different open-ended questions, polls. You can add those elements in and students will respond on their devices and you as the teacher are able to see all of their responses. Plus, you can share out student responses. So if you ask an open-ended question and a student has a really good response, you can share it out. It will place it on every student's screen so that they can see it, and then you can talk and have a discussion about it. Now, if you have not seen that previous video, I highly recommend going back and watching it. I show you how to take a set of Google Slides that you've probably already created. I mean, if you watch my videos, hopefully I have encouraged you to use Google Slides and take that and make it into an interactive Nearpod. Now, here's the deal, okay? Nearpod is free, but you have limited storage. Personally, I have paid to upgrade myself to a gold plan because I'm using it that often, and for me, it's well worth the money. I understand though, not everyone is in a position to be able to pay for that. So here's my recommendation. <laughs> I will actually create the Nearpod lessons and as my team teachers and I have split up lesson planning, I will share out the Nearpod link. So when you go to Nearpod, you can choose share with teachers and you can get an editable link. So it will create a new copy of that lesson in whoever clicks on that link's Nearpod library. So if I share it out with my team teacher, Lauren, when she clicks on the link, it will make a copy to her Nearpod library. And we keep all of these links in a Google Doc. So you can actually create these lessons and then once you've used them, you can delete them from your library. You don't need them anymore. But if you save that link, you can always go back and reopen it up in case you need it for some reason. I recommend if you're wanting to use Nearpod and you don't wanna upgrade, just delete the lessons after you're done using them, but keep a Google Doc of the links so that you can get them back if needed. I also recommend organizing your Nearpod with folders because it can get kind of cluttered. So I did go over that in that previous video. Make sure you go back and watch it. My third mm -hmm. digital favorite is Google Keep. Now, this is not new, okay? I have been talking about Google Keep for a while. It's almost like an online storage system for sticky notes. So if you think of all those sticky notes you probably have like on your computer, on your desk, on your mirror, I don't know about you all, but that was me for a long time. I would just stick sticky notes everywhere. But Google Keep is an electronic version of that. You can create these notes of either text, images, um, you can create checklists, and it's a game changer, okay? Let me just share a few of the ways that I have been using Google Keep. Number one, I love the checklist feature. I have created checklists for the morning, the afternoon, planning, Fridays, like if I need a checklist, it's in there, okay? Um, for example, my planning checklist. I have a list of everything I need to do in the planning like steps. I shared how I'm using Nearpod. So I'll say like create Nearpod math lesson, create slides for Google Classroom, schedule assignment on Google Classroom, create Nearpod for science lesson, and so on and so forth. What I love about Google Keeps checklist is that you can reset it with one click. So after you've clicked off all of the boxes, down at the bottom, you just click, I think it's the three little dots, and then you choose uncheck all items. So then your checklist is reset and ready to go for the next time. I also will use Google Keep to keep track of like important contacts, sometimes login information. I don't recommend doing it for like your main login information, but if there's some obscure website and you don't log into it very often, you could totally put your username and password in there. Um, let me look through. Oh, I have a few like links to things that I use pretty often. So maybe I don't want to bookmark it, but I want to store the link somewhere. I have little email templates that I send, which I do actually store in my email service. Email templates are a game changer, but I have backups of them in Google Keep just in case I ever lose the email template within my email. I'm a little bit, you know, controlling in that way, but I just like to make sure I have my ducks in a row. Now you are able to change the color of the notes. You're able to pin them. So if you have certain ones you want to keep up at the top, you can. I'm pretty sure I actually made a video all about like using checklists and stuff on Google Keep. So I will link that for you down in the description box. My fifth digital favorite is classroom screen. Now again, I've made a full video about this before, but I have re found it during this whole virtual teaching time and I have started using it more than I ever have before. So classroom screen is 
a screen, okay? You can like change the background, but you can put different elements onto the screen, like text boxes, like timers, like clocks. And what I really like to use this for is those kind of transitional times in our day. So for example, let's say I finished giving my math lesson and now I want students to work on their math assignment on Google Classroom. I will open up Classroom screen, I will share my screen through Google Meet, and on the screen, I will put directions. So I will tell them, go to Google Classroom, open up the assignment, complete it, turn it in. I'll have another text box with early finisher options. So if my students finish early, they can just go there. I will have a timer that lets my students know how much longer they have to work. And I'll put any reminders that they might need maybe for that assignment directly on the screen. I feel like it's just a single place to house all of these different tools at once. Now, Classroom Screen has changed just a little bit since I last made that video. It is still free, but they have now added a paid version. I personally don't have the paid version, but it will allow you to save screens, which I do feel like is kind of a game changer. I'm just trying to limit myself and not pay for any more things that I don't have to, but you can totally use the free version. It just won't save those elements that you already have on the screen, or you can update to the paid version and you will have the ability to actually save the screen. But if you want more information on how this works, please go back and watch that older video. I will link it for you down below. My sixth the digital favorite is called Toy Theater, and it's a collection of virtual manipulatives. Now, I do know of several virtual manipulatives. Another one I use is Didax. I like them both, okay, but I feel like Toy Theater, it's just very bright and colorful and very engaging for my students, whereas some of the ones on Didax are like, I don't know, just kind of doll looking, but I will say the place value discs on Didax match the color of the place value discs that I have in the classroom, and I really like that feature. But otherwise, I pretty much always use Toy Theater. Now, Toy Theater is free, whoop whoop, and they do also have educational games in addition to the virtual manipulatives. But it's free, you can go on, you can pull up those virtual manipulatives, and it's a great way to model problems. You just share out your screen on Google Meet or Zoom, you can model the problem, and you can also share out the link with students. So if students are working on math work, you can link them to Toy Theater and they can use that in order to help solve the problems. My seventh digital favorite is Epic. I have been using Epic ever since either my first year of teaching, maybe my second year of teaching, but it's basically like Netflix, but with digital books. <laughs> and for educators, you can sign up for an account for free. They have, I think it's over like 40,000 virtual books and they have a lot of really engaging books. Like they're not like the boring books that, you know, kids don't really wanna read. They're like new, current, fun, exciting books. I really love to use it just as an educator. I don't even have my students get on and pull up books. That's definitely an option. You can create student accounts, but I just use it as the teacher. Sometimes for a lesson, I might need some supplemental text. So for a science lesson on plants, I might need some different sources to be able to pull information to get exactly what I want for my students. What I love is I can just search a topic, I can see all of the different books, and I can see the levels. And so it allows me to differentiate for my classes. If I have a class where maybe I need a lower level book, I can find that. And then if I have a class where I need a higher level book, I can find that. And it makes it really easy for me to differentiate. So again, once you find that book, you can favorite it, you can create collections to help organize everything, and then you can just share out your screen on Google Meet or Zoom or whatever video conference software you're using, and you can read the book to students. Some of the books do have read aloud features. Maybe they all do, I don't know. I don't really use the read aloud feature. I would rather my students hear my voice, but I love that you can go into like a full screen mode and it's just, an awesome free resource for teachers. My eighth and final digital favorite is Google Sheets. Now, I did not really like Google Sheets for a long time. I never liked Excel. Okay, this goes way back. I just didn't really like Excel. However, I have fallen in love with Google Sheets due to the ability to add checkboxes within a cell. To me, this is a game changer. I do use Google Keep for those like recurring checklists. So like my weekly planning checklist or my Monday checklist, but 
I really like to use Google Sheets for different student checklists. So this might be students turning in papers or maybe it's tracking attendance or maybe it's tracking completion of assignments. I love that I can create these spreadsheets and I can create multiple sheets. So down at the bottom, they look like little tabs. I could have a sheet for math assignments and a sheet for science assignments and a sheet for your social studies assignments all within one single document. Now, I actually use Google Sheets in order to create a free e-learning attendance tracker. And I created this in the spring, but I updated it for the fall. So it now has all of the dates through the end of the school year. I will link for you down below if you wanna sign up for that. It will allow you to fully edit it once you make your copy so you can customize it however you want. I left it very basic, it's like black, white, and gray, but you can add in color, you can add in your students' names, you can change the dates if needed, but hopefully that will be a big time saver for you and take some of the load off of your plate. So that is it. Those are my current digital favorites. Those are definitely the digital tools that I have been using most often. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with your teacher friends. Also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.